All right, let's, <laughs> sorry. Take two. Integers are the set of all whole numbers and their opposites. Now let's break that down a little bit. So first, what are whole numbers again? Whole numbers are the numbers you grew up with. When you first started learning math and you started learning how to count, you were counting whole numbers. Zero, one, two, three, all the way up to infinity, those are whole numbers. Those are also part of integers. Now, the opposite of those whole numbers, so instead of one, the opposite of one would be negative one. Opposite of two, negative two. Opposite of three, negative three, and all the way down to negative infinity. So those are integers. What you'll notice is no fractions and no decimals. Okay, that's really important. If we look at a number line, zero is right in the middle. If we go to the right of zero on the number line, those would be the positive integers, and to the left, naturally, would be the negative integers. Zero is neither positive nor negative. You can just think of zero as like neutral. Now, some examples of some positive integers, one, seven, a thousand, those are all positive integers. Examples of negative integers would be like negative two, negative 12, negative 10,000. Those are all examples of negative integers. All right, let's get to our first example. Write an integer to represent the situation. All right, so for example one, all we're really looking for is a keyword that is gonna tell us is this integer gonna be positive or is it gonna be negative? That's really all we're looking for. So for part A, it says you gain 100 points in a video game. So again, we're looking for a keyword that would tell us is that 100 points gonna be positive or would it be negative? And hopefully you see that keyword is gain. So if we're gaining points, that's a positive, right? That's good. So that means it's gonna be a positive 100. The opposite of that would be lose points. Lose would obviously mean that's negative 100. Now notice, I just wrote the number 100. I didn't put a positive symbol like that in front. Technically, that's still correct. However, we almost never write, if a number's positive, we just write the number, and we know that that means it's positive. So my suggestion, sorry, my suggestion is just write the number if it's positive, don't worry about uh, putting a little positive symbol. All right, for B, it says the, net, uh, the temperature is five degrees below zero. So again, we're looking for that key word, and hopefully below stands out to you. So if it's below zero, that would be an integer of negative five. And since it, uh, the instructions only said to write an integer, I don't have to worry about units or anything, so I'm just gonna write negative five. Notice I said negative five. Teachers hate it if you say minus five, so just heads up. Don't say minus five when it should be negative. Minus is an operation, not a sign. All right, so we did a few examples. Let's talk about some more of those keywords that you should pay attention to. Here's a collection of some keywords you definitely wanna know. Most of them, hopefully, are kind of self-explanatory. You probably could have guessed which one's meant positive and which one's meant negative uh, without me even telling you. However, there are a few on here that I do wanna kind of explain and make sure you understand. The first is withdraw and deposit. If you've never had a bank account, uh, you might not know what those words mean. Withdraw means you're taking money out of your bank account. So if you go to like an ATM or something, put your card in and you get money out, that would be negative. And it's kind of confusing, but you're getting money. But what it means is your bank account would be dropping, right? Would be going down. You're taking money out of your bank account. Whereas deposit, that's when you're putting money into your bank account. So that would mean positive. So withdraw and deposit, those are words you definitely wanna know. And then the other ones that can maybe get a, get a bit confusing are debt and credit. If you have a debt, that means you owe someone money, right? You borrowed uh, money from somebody and you said you're gonna pay them back. So that's a debt. Uh, that would be negative. Whereas a credit, for example, maybe your grandparents gave you a gift card to your favorite store uh, for 50 bucks, let's say. That means you have a $50 credit at that store. That's money that you can spend at that store. Uh, so that's why that would be a positive. Uh, so those are some words you definitely want to know. Here's a few problems to try on your own. All right, let's get to the next example. 
Graph the integer and its opposite. So for this example, we're going to be graphing these on a number line. And since we're graphing the opposite, I know that 0 should be right in the middle. So I'm going to start with my number line. Arrows at both ends are really important. That means it goes in both directions forever. Make sure you have that. And because we're doing the opposites, I'm going to put 0 right in the middle. Now, I have a decision to make. There's really only a couple things you got to worry about when you're making number lines. The first is you have to be consistent with whatever you're counting by. So right now, if I'm going to graph 4 and negative 4, I could decide to count by 4. So I could go 4, like that. If I did that though, the next number that I would label would have to be 8. I can't go 4 and then put 1, 5 right here. That would be inconsistent because I, right from here to here, I, I am telling you that I'm counting by 4s. If all of a sudden I count by 1s, that's not being consistent. So don't do that. Um, the other thing is, let's say I wanted to count by 2s instead. So let's say I'm going to put a 2 there. The other thing that you have to pay attention to is your spacing which means the spacing between should also be the same. So that distance equals 2. Again, that distance is 2. two. And I have to make sure I'm consistent with that. So those are just a few things to, to pay attention to when you're making your number lines. Make sure you're consistent with the spacing and also be consistent with what you're counting by. Okay, so now it's time to actually graph it. So if I want to graph 4, this is labeled. This isn't, nothing has been graphed yet. There is no integer that's been graphed on this number line. To actually graph the 4, I actually put a point. I put a dot, I fill it in, right on the number line. Don't put it above the number line, don't put it below, don't do any circles or anything like that. You put a point on there and make sure it's labeled, which it already is. Alright, so I graphed 4, now I gotta graph the opposite. I'm counting by twos, so I need to be consistent, make sure my spacing is the same. So if, if I'm going left now, now I'm in the negative integers. So this is not going to be two, this is negative two, and then keep going. The next would be negative four. So I graph four already, now it's time to graph negative four. So I put a point on the number line and make sure it's labeled. So that is what graphing four and its opposite should look like. Now, you may have done it different. You could have counted by ones, and that's totally fine, or counted by fours, so that's totally fine too. I decided to count by twos, no big deal. All right, let's look at B. So now we got a graph negative 10 and its opposite, which would be 10. I'm gonna do the exact same thing at the beginning. I'm gonna make my number line. And now, I know I have to graph all the way 10 and negative 10. If I count by ones, that's going to take a lot of extra effort, right? I'm going to have to go one, two, three, four, five, all the way up to ten. And I'm lazy, I don't really want to do that. So instead, I'm just going to count by fives. Why not, right? So we'll say that is five, and then again, I got to make sure I'm consistent. So that would then be ten. And then same thing here, I'm going to go, that would then be negative five, and then same would be negative ten. And now it's just time to graph, so negative 10, put a point, and at 10, another point. And there you go. Here's a few to try on your own. And today's shout out goes to Thado Mofolo, I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, but he's been commenting and supporting all of my new videos and I really appreciate it. So thank you so much for all the support.